The topic is the perpetuating, per perpetuation of the uh, revolving door syndrome, and we have to uh, talk about uh, the uh, so-called revolving door uh, syndrome, uh, Reverend uh, uh, K. Walker. And of course, uh, Reverend Walker, let's pick up uh, right. during this uh, sec second segment and give you an opportunity to uh, talk about a system that uh, is all a part of this revolving door system, and that is the parole system. Let's okay. talk about parole in okay. the state of Tennessee. Well, one of the things that I want to say about that is, you know, when I'm talking about perpetuating the mm -hmm. revolving door syndrome, you know, we always look at uh, crime in, in our society. P politicians run on, let's get tough on crime, let's mm -hmm. do this and let's do that. But I don't believe people really look at Dr. Haney, you know, why do we have this revolving door syndrome? Why is the recidivism rates mm -hmm. the way that they are? And why is the truth not being told concerning the recidivism rate mm -hmm. when the, in reality the most people that do in, in actuality reoffend and come back into the prison, mm -hmm. uh, over 50 percent of those people are, 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 are go back on technical violation. That means they don't go back with new charges. Mm -hmm. They go back because they fail to meet up with some of the conditions of their parole. Mm -hmm. And what I'm saying is this. When it comes to the, uh, that revolving door syndrome, mm -hmm. I believe that to, the parole board plays a role Good. in perpetuating that in the sense that, you know, first of all, on the back end, there's not adequate supervision mm -hmm. or of the ex-offender when they come out. You know, mm -hmm. there, there are not enough things or not enough programs that's out there to help. And then the programs that are, are out there to help, mm -hmm. the parole boards are not working close mm -hmm. enough in conjunction with those programs to make that transition from the inmate to mm -hmm. into society a successful one. And then on the other side, coming out the door when they meet the parole mm -hmm. board. Now you take, for example, you take inmates, and, and Dr. Haney, I have sat on parole boards, man, for the last 10 years or so. Let me interrupt. But parole, when you talk about parole board, are, are we talk about several boards, or is that just one general board for the entire state of Tennessee? It's one board for the entire state, state, of, uh -huh. uh, for the state of Tennessee, uh -huh. and they, they go to the various institutions. Okay. I think it's a total of seven parole board members. members. In most cases, they will send out a hearing officer who would hear the case okay. and then make a recommendation as to whether they would recommend parole or deny parole. Then it would go in for... They had to have at least, I think, four votes in order mm -hmm. to come out or be declined. Mm -hmm. And what happens is in the parole process, an individual will go in, and mind you, the purpose of incarceration is for punishment and rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. An individual will go before this parole board, and, and you know, I, I think it's good to know, you know, what their mindset mm -hmm. is in regards to the crimes that they committed bringing them into the system. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, okay, if you take an individual that's been incarcerated on a charge for it, He's been in there for 15 years. Okay, well, 15 years, you, that's punishment in prison. If you're in prison for 15 years, you, you're punished, okay? Now, what, it, what needs to be looked at is what has that person done during that 15-year period of time? Have they uh, involved themselves in the various programs? Have they gotten their GED? Have they, have they picked up a skill or a trade or anything like that? And why not look at that, what they've done while they're in there, to be a determinant factor mm -hmm. as to whether or not this individual Good. should be released? But more times than not, Dr. Haney, what's happening is you got a parole board that's acting like they're the judges in there, and they're actually going in here pretty much retrying, retrying the charge. Because that's, you know, that's and, what it appears. And, and uh -huh. it's not their role. Uh -huh. I, don't know if, I don't know if it's an ego thing or what it is, but it's not their role to go mm -hmm. in there and retry these people, and then a lot of them being turned down for parole who are eligible for, who are, who are qualified. Mm -hmm. I mean, parole is a privilege. It is not a right. Mm -hmm. But privileges are something that you earn, and it should be based upon what you've done mm -hmm. while you're going through your punishment mm -hmm. for the crime you committed and if you have proven yourself to be here re rehabilitated then why not release mm -hmm. well what happens is and what I mean by perpetuating the, the revolving door mm -hmm. syndrome is that the parole board is more likely than not to parole somebody with a bad negative institutional record than they will with somebody that has a, a good, good institutional, institutional record and has spent sufficient amount of time in the system. Now, I don't know what advantages them to do that. that. Well, that's what I was about to say. That's almost setting a person up to uh, fail. Well, you know yeah. he's coming back. Yeah, uh-huh. And, and Dr. Hayden, I'm, just, I'm not just talking. I sit on the parole board. I mean, I sit on the parole board with a guy. Mm -hmm. And this guy actually sit there and if I had been in, uh, if I had been a parole hearing officer, I would have denied it. Because mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. he sit there, talked to himself out of parole, and they paroled Rolled him, him anyway. and he got out, and he wasn't out hardly no time before he reoffended. He came back with a new charge. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But they paroled him. They knew. 
They knew this guy wasn't going to go out there in society and act right, but they sent him anyway. But then you take, for example, I, I recently went to the parole board with a guy, been incarcerated for five years now. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, we went up earlier part of the year, and they said, okay, uh, we got to get some stuff worked out on your on your cases. There's a conflict with the charges of, on your sentences. So that got worked out. Went back to parole board about three months later, and then they both hearing officers recommended the first time, recommended him this time, and then when he got his final vote, they turned him down. But now this guy, he's a, he he sufficiently served his time uh, in terms of the fun punishment phase. He has been rehabilitated, he's been in the program, he don't have the write-ups and all of that mm -hmm. stuff like that. But then they put him off for a year. Why? Because they know he's not coming back. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So the people that's going to come <laughs> back, get out. <laughs> get out, and yeah. the people who, 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 might not, who might not come back, right. uh, they try to keep them as long as... Absolutely. And, and there's another gentleman, Dr. Haney, down in another institution. And, and I don't want to call these guys names because the parole board, mm -hmm. the way they're doing this guy already anyway, mm -hmm. I mean, if I mention his name, they probably retaliate against him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But anyway, this man's been locked about 34 years. I mean, out of 34 years, this man only had about four write-ups, and they're minor write-ups. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's, he's completed all kind of programs, even started an organization to help other inmates while he was in mm -hmm. there. I mean, the whole night, 34 years, sufficient. That's punishment, man. He's been punished 34 years in prison. He's punished. Mm -hmm. But in that 34-year period, year period of time, he has rehabilitated himself. I mean, go to the parole board, man. He got all the, I mean, uh, correctional officers coming out in support. Man, had a psychologist, had a psychological evaluation. Uh, and, and, and not only what did he send the paperwork, but he was up there himself with the paperwork mm -hmm. talking about it. And they still let this man mm -hmm. decline this man but people with similar charges that had bad institutional record that even had attempted assault against correctional officers had been paroled spending less time than this guy in prison man and well, well did they give any kind of uh, justification or any kind of reason why they um, the did old, not wish to allow him to the uh, old catch-all phrase dr hayne is seriousness of offense man dr hayne that's pure garbage because mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you why, because if my crime was serious enough to get me locked up, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying, it's, it's going to always be serious. serious. When I die, it's going to be serious. serious. It's always you know a serious place. Just yeah. the very, very fact that you've committed a crime yeah, is a serious, serious. Uh, offense. Okay, well, and so we're getting ready for our second uh, commercial break here, uh, and then we'll give you an opportunity to uh, further develop uh, some of those ideas in reference to the system. But it does appear that... Uh, the uh, parole board has a tremendous amount of power, yeah. but it does not seem as if they're willing to uh, work with uh, individuals to allow them right. the opportunity and the privilege yeah. to take advantage. And of course, we'll be back uh, with our audience following this very, very short uh, commercial break. The topic is for 